Hey, I'm Derek from Fiber. I want to take a moment to show you the new 2 Series dash that we have and just how to operate it. Let's start with um, the pneumatic pump. So each dash unit has a second or a secondary air pump that uh, runs off truck air um, that does all our rinsing and washing. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to turn that on. You can turn that on right here. Um, there's a regulator here so you can adjust the pressure. Normally we set it around 60 psi. Uh, it's a nice rinsing pressure. If you want the air to last longer on your truck, then you can turn it down a little bit. But if you want it to rinse a little bit harder, uh, you can turn that up. So turn that, turn your air on. Now we'll talk about filling your inductors. So we've got 75 gallon inductors, or about 280 liters. They um, so 300 gallons total storage, or 1,100 liters, is what we're looking at. They have um, there's two ways or different ways of loading them. I'll talk about jugs first. Two different ways we can do jugs. First one is take your foil off, take your lid off, take your foil off, and then each each inductor has a rinse nozzle in them, and you can just put your jug on there. I take my foil off, put it on here. While that's emptying out, I go and grab my next one, get it ready. Once you want to wash it out, you just push it down, and it activates that rinse nozzle, washing it out. So very simple. There is a knife kit available as well, and what we do there is we install, install a valve here, and then you can slam your jug, turn on your, your hose to wash it out, um, so that's one way to do jugs. Um, talk about dry products. There's a couple different ways we can handle dry products. Uh, the first way is the very left inductor, the D inductor in this case in a dash four, is has a, an agitate hose that's installed in the bottom of it. So what you can do is you can throw like a little pack of herbicide or something like that in there and turn that on and it'll get that in suspension. So it kind of shoots water in the bottom of the neck, right in the cone and kind of swirls that around and gets that in suspension. If you want to, if you have high volumes of dry, like we have people doing two, 200 pounds, 150 pounds worth of dry product, um, we have a dry mix agitator you can add. So you can add it to any of these inductors. You could have multiple kits if you wanted. And what you do there is you would fill it with some water, you know, maybe 20 gallons of water or so, throw your dry product in and then turn on this blender. And there's an air motor, turns it on, um, so a very simple way of, of mixing. So this does a great job if you've got higher volumes. You know, anything bigger than a little herbicide pack, I would encourage you to have this. And we're seeing more and more chemical companies come with dry options just because of cost. So um, can be added later. You can add it to any one of these three inductors, but a great feature. Uh, we'll talk about bulk products here. Um, the easiest way is to use gravity. Um, basically hook up the tote transfer hose. And right here, you can turn on your valves and you can fill your inductor to the desired amount. Once it's there, shut it off. So a very simple way of handling bulk. Um, the tote transfer hoses that we sell, they're, they're always long enough to reach to the front inductor so you can install them when you put them up there. And then just have the hoses hanging here and plug them in when you're ready. And then they still have valves on them. So that's kind of how we'd handle all the gravity. Um, if you want to do bulk products, but from down below, we have chemical transfer pumps that we can install. So we have two different air diaphragm pumps that can be put on these things. Uh, one does 20 gallons a minute, one does 40 gallons a minute. They're mounted down below. I can turn them on and off right here. And then there would just be a hose that would come up from the back and I'd plug it in. Um, and you can then fill to the desired amount and then shut off the valve. So that's how you would handle that. So it's very simple. Um, yeah, I'll talk about uh, how to load now. So once you got all your inductors loaded the way you want, you can do everything from the ground. You'd hook your, your hose up to your sprayer, uh, turn on your master water, fire up your pump, and I would send about two to 300 gallons of water to the sprayer before I send any chemicals so that there's lots of water separation at the sprayer. Then start sending your products. So send them in the order for the, if one foams more than the other, we'll send it at the very end. Um, but send your mixing order that you want here by pulling your handle. So as you pull the handle, you pull it all the way down. It's going to open the master, master valve on the bottom and start unloading the tank. It's also going to open a second valve that starts washing the inductor down. So it's throwing water sideways in there, washing the walls down. So as it's unloading, it's washing at the same time when it's emptied, you would go and you close it. But don't close it all the way, just kind of close it most of the way, three quarter of the way. And what it's going to do is going to shut that rinser off first. So you can stop rinsing and then all that water can fall and you can suck that last little bit of water out. And then you shut that off and it's done. So uh, don't just slam it shut. You're going to end up with a little puddle of water in there. Just kind of either if you do that, just kind of give it a little bit of a burp 
or when you go to close it, just go slowly, kind of pause and shut it off. Um, so once you're full, you know, you can unload these inductors in about 30, 40 seconds. So it doesn't take very long to unload. So you, usually at the end, you have probably two or 300, up to 600 gallons of chemical or of just water you need to get to the sprayer yet. So just let it pump its water. When you're done, shut your pump off, shut your master water off and uh, very simple. So very easy to operate that way. Uh, no running around. The other thing, we always mount the manifold close to the, the dash handle so that you can manage your tanks. So if you've got a tank up on a step deck and it starts sucking air, you know, you can shut that off and, uh, you know, just control the water going to the other one. This is also really nice for reloading. So if you've got a, another water source for reloading your, your trailer, um, you can manage, you know, how it goes to which tank all from down here. So that's the basics of how to operate the dash.